Welcome to this brand new tutorial, and you're gonna learn whatever you can see right now on screen. So the cool thing about this animation is we're working with geometry nodes, and whenever the sphere actually comes close to one of the glass panes with the hole in it, it actually opens up and this uh, sphere can go through. So yeah, you can probably imagine what you can do with this knowledge later on in your own animations. So uh, let's just get started. To start this animation, I would love to start with the sphere because the sphere will eventually interact with the geometry nodes, right? So if we already animate the sphere, then we know what the geometry nodes are gonna do. So, shift A to add a UV sphere, and I'm gonna move this UV sphere around the X axis, so GX5, and then this is going to be our first position of our animation. So let's drag this timeline up, and our animation is gonna take 120 frames. Then go to frame 0, click on I, and then insert keyframe at location. At frame 60, I want this sphere to move around here. So GX minus 10. Then again, I location. At frame 120, I want this sphere to be back at the original position. So let's just select this first keyframe. Click on Ctrl C to copy it, and then Ctrl V to paste this. So now we just have copied this keyframe, and we have a nice and looping animation as you can see. If you have watched my previous video, which sadly has not been received very well, then you know how to make these animations a little bit more interesting. So if I play this, you can see it just goes back and forward, and back and forward. Okay, looks decent. But if we go to the graph editor, move this a bit up and change these curves, then we can see some differences in these animations. So select the first keyframe, click on N or uh, click on this little arrow here to drag this out and change the interpolation to hmm, let's do exponential. Now, if we also change the easing method to ease in and out, then you can see that this curve has been drastically changed. And if we play this, you can see that first of all, this um, sphere goes quite slow, speeds up in the middle, and then slows down again. Which in my opinion really fits this kind of animation very well. We can do the exact same for this keyframe down here. So interpolation, exponential, easing, ease in and out. And here we have the exact same going forwards and backwards of this animation. The only thing we have to do right now is maybe add an extra subdivision surface to this sphere, right click and shade smooth. And that is essentially everything that we need for the sphere animation. So now it's time for geometry nodes. If you want to support me in any kind of way and want more of these tutorials, then please look at my Skillshare affiliate link. The first month will be totally free for you. And I'm also a teacher on Skillshare. So if you want to learn anything about product rendering and animations, then you can look at this class. Or if you want to take a look at my latest class, then this might be something for you. The first month is free, so why not? Well, let's go on to the tutorial. Just go here and select the geometry node workspace. And here we can edit this a little bit because we do not necessarily need this section here, right? So we can just drag this up here and have a little bit more space for our animation. I would also like to add my timeline just so we can play our animation whenever we want. Now, if we select this cube and click on new, we add a, uh, yeah, a geometry node system to our cube. You can see that this is also just a modifier, which means that we can also add extra modifiers if we want to. I do not want you to be afraid of geometry nodes at all. This is my first time using geometry nodes, so if I can do it, you for sure can do it as well. And right now, this cube has been set as the geometry nodes, which means the group input geometry is this cube. Now, because this geometry is connected to the group output, we essentially can also see the cube. If I disconnect this geometry, however, we cannot see our cube anymore. This is still fine and this will happen a lot when you use geometry nodes because we might want to add other kinds of geometry as well. But let's say we're gonna add a cube. So search, cube, and here you can see that we have mesh 
and this mesh can go into the geometry. And here we have a little cube. We can scale this cube up and even play around with the vertices if necessary. So I want it to be, um, yeah, three seems fine, but around the X axis, I want it to be quite small. So 0 0.05 should be fine. So now we have like a small glass, uh, yeah, plane. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that this sphere can go through here. So we need to create a hole. And you might remember it from the modifiers, but with a Boolean modifier, we can cut a mesh out of another mesh. So let's say we're going to add a cylinder. And uh, this is our cylinder. We want to cut this out of the cube. So with a Boolean, a mesh Boolean, we can do this. So the first mesh is going to be our cube. And whatever meshes we want to cut out of it is going to be, in this case, the cylinder. But it's going to go in mesh 2. Then this mesh can be connected to the geometry output. And here we can see that it has been cut. However, this is not a circle. Does that make sense? Yes. Because if we look at the cylinder from the side view, it essentially looks like a square. So we need to rotate this cylinder to make sure that it's actually going to be a sphere. And we can do this with a transform node. So if we drag this transform node in between the cylinder and in this case the group output, we can rotate this around the y-axis for 90 degrees. Awesome. So now that it has been rotated, we can drag this result into the mesh boolean and we can get rid of this other line here. And then this end result will end up in the group output. And here we have our beautiful little circle. However, we can see that this geometry is not nice and smooth. So if we take a look at our cylinder we can see that first of all it's quite low poly so the vertices could go to 64 instead of 32 but it is also not nice shaded smooth right so if we click on shift a and add a shade smooth then set shade smooth we can put it in between the cylinder and a transform and now you can see that it is nice smooth shaded however we can kind of see that this shading looks kind of weird and if we add more geometry, so maybe side segments, we can see that this easily can get fixed. So now we have this result and we have a very nice and smooth yeah, hole in here as well. Right now, we want to make sure that whenever this sphere gets close to our hole, it actually will fit in this hole. So to change the scale, I would like to add a scale elements node and I'll put this in between the transform and the mesh boolean uh, from this cylinder section then if we scale this up or down you can see that yeah the scale of this hole changes and you can animate this if you want but we can also kind of automate it so if we drag the sphere inside the scene collection to our geometry nodes here we can see that we added automatically the object info node with the sphere applied to it. Let's put this to relative and add a geometry proximity node. So geometry proximity. Then this geometry will be connected to the target. And here we can select the distance. So the distance goes into the scale of the scale elements. So now dependent on the distance of the sphere you essentially change the scale of the cylinder. Right now we cannot see it because the cylinder is scaled too far. However, if we play this a little bit, you can see that the closer we're getting to this glass, the smaller this sphere becomes. So first of all, that is not necessarily what we want. We want this hole to become bigger while this uh, sphere comes closer. So if we use an RGB curves node and just switch these curves around we essentially invert it so now if i come closer this hole gets bigger it is a little bit hard to see because the sphere gets in front of it but if i hide the sphere you can see that the closer i come to frame 30 uh, the bigger does this hole gets so how do we make sure that this hole is first of all always visible so at frame zero i also want a little bit of a hole here and to make it a little bit more smooth 
for this, we need a map range node. And we want to put this map range node in between the RGB curves and the scale elements. Let's go to frame 0. And you want to play around with the 2 min. So just drag this bit up so we can see a small little hole. Then at frame 30, we want to make sure that our sphere actually fits. So the 2 max can go a bit bigger. And here, we can always see this little hole, and whenever we get too close, it opens up for us and our sphere fits through. And that is what you need to create this cool effect. You can also change this linear to a smooth step or even smoother step to make this animation even smoother. So that makes our animation look even better. However, we do want three of these planes. And it's just annoying to duplicate this over and over and move them piece by piece. So I highly suggest we create another node here, which is the combine X, Y, and Z. Then I want to move both the cube and the cylinder around the X axis at the same time. The transform node is perfect for this because the combine X, Y, Z, this factor can just go into the translation of this transform node. We're gonna need another transform node uh, for this cube. And also this factor goes into the translation of this cube transform. Now, if I move this X axis, you can see that both the cylinder and the cube move at the same time. So we always have a little hole there. Perfect. So why do we want to do this? I actually want to Join all of these together, so just select them all, then Ctrl G to join them as a group. And then when you click on top, you can see that all of these nodes are just now one little node, right? It's just a little node group. You can change the name of this node group in this label here, so uh, glass. And of course, you can change the name of the group as well. If you want to go back into the node tree, you just select this uh, glass here and then click on top again. As you can see right now, we cannot change the X axis of this plane. So we need to make sure that we can actually add it. And how we can do that is just um, go into this node tree, go to group and click on plus to create another input. Right now in the group input, you can see that we created an input, right? A new socket. This socket goes into the X axis of this combine X, Y, Z. And we can rename this if we want to. So location X. If I now go to top again, you can see that we have a new little um, yeah, option here. This is our X location, so I can move it around if we want to. The cool thing about this is that if we now just duplicate it, use a join geometry node to join these two together and change the X location on one of these two, maybe two. Now you can see that both of these also work independently. So this hole will get bigger first and then this one. So that is perfect. Now I'm going to duplicate it once more. And because this is such a, like have a big socket, you can literally throw in as many as you want. And this one is going to be minus two. And here we have three of these glass planes, which all act separately on our sphere. Awesome, right? So that is essentially the animation. However, many of you might not know how to add materials to all of these models. Also, that is quite simple. What you want to do is you just want to go to shading, look into the rendered viewport. I personally did it inside cycles, but that's totally up to you. Then the sphere, because this is just a separate model, you can just create a new material uh, for the sphere itself. So here, this is going to be the sphere uh, material. And yeah, as you can see, you can just change it to whatever you want. For the glass planes, however, if you select these, you select the cube that we have created in the beginning, right? And if you click on top, you can still see it. Now, if we want to give these a material, so right now it's already a material has been added, nothing changes. That is because we need to go inside of the geometry nodes and actually add a material there. So go back to the geometry nodes, go in one of these glass groups, and then add a material. So it's going to be set material. 
and we're going to put it all the way at the end just before the group output. So here I can just uh, click this material for instance and automatically you can see that this has been changed. All of them have been changed at the same time because these groups um, are just like materials so you can just reuse them over and over. If you want to maybe duplicate one of them, so let's say I'm gonna duplicate this one and uh, first of all I need to create a new material here. Then I can select a different material for just that specific model. And that is essentially it. So I will leave it to you guys how you want to render this. I just did a very simple glass shader uh, for these here. And this was just white. So it doesn't really matter what I did. Uh, but I hope to see what you guys created with this cool animation. Please send it to me on Instagram. I have a link in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye bye.